he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome back to another episode of the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects Podcast. I'm Joe DeLeon here with Ryan Roberts, and we're continuing our summer scouting series as we are breaking down individual prospects, comparing them to guys with similar traits or similar draft stocks, somewhere in that range. And today, continuing our receiver discussion, we're doing Quinton Johnston from TCU and A.T. Perry from Wake Forest, the two massive big body receivers in this class, not the only big receivers, obviously, but two of the more notable large receivers. Ryan, I got to say, I had a lot of fun watching these guys, and I was pleasantly surprised by some of the plays that they made. I mean, at times, I also I, I was having more fun watching these guys at times than I was watching Butte and, and Jackson Smith the Jigba. Maybe it's because they're big and they can move really well. I don't know what it is, but they were exciting to watch with some of the traits that they have. Yeah, I thought you said that you were a small receiver kind of guy. You fell I, into the I love. Am, I am an F. I am a a fan of receivers that are really good athletes. So that um, these guys fall into that category. Why didn't you like Boutte then? I thought he was good. I did not like him. I think that that I was know. a misconception. Just like somebody commented on our last video that mm. I said that Jackson Smith the Jigba wasn't quick, and that wasn't exactly oh, I saw what. That. I saw well, that. That's not a, that's not what I meant. I'm just saying he's not as like it's not his best trait. Like that would be right. dumb to say that it is. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, people just it was probably a, a Ohio State fan to be honest. I mean, we know how bias works. But jo- Joe, let me ask you. Yeah. Four four receivers into this week, the f- the best receiver you've watched was it yesterday or was it today that we're going to talk about them? I think yesterday, but I think that these guys are a lot closer than. I would have anticipated. I don't know if I would take. I, I think I would. I don't want to. I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. Let's spoil it. Spoil it. No, I'm gonna. We're gonna <laughs> save the draft stock stuff until the end. But I, I, I thought they were very, very entertaining. And, and we're gonna get into breaking down these prospects. Before we do, I just want to tell our listeners about Bet Online. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments including updated odds on the NBA and NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball fights, and even next season's NFL futures. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It's super easy to get started, so head to their website today or use your mobile device to join and use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, Ryan. So I, I want to talk similarities first because the, both of these guys, very tall, lean receivers, Perry a little bit thicker um, and, and slightly taller than, than Johnson in this circumstance. But there were noticeably a lot of similarities between them, which is that length. I thought that they moved pretty well for bigger receivers. And the one thing that really popped to me is is the hands, like the possession ability. That is really, really good to have that possession trait for both of these guys, uh, you know, in this class. Man, I miss where the mute button was. My God, I'm sorry. Right. I'm trying to like. I'm sorry, dude. I'm really, I'm really sorry. For some reason, it would not let me cl- click the mute button. But yeah, I mean, the the so these kind of players. I mean, they have to have better hands than maybe a couple of the guys we talked about yesterday or a couple of the smaller guys because that's like how they win, right? I mean, they're these guys, and it's I'm not saying that they are I'm not saying that they are guys that are just catch point receivers. So do not misconstrue what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when you are this long and this big, there's just gonna be naturally times where you're gonna play in a crowd more than some s- small, quicker guys. Like it's just gonna be the trait that you win off of. So having solid hands is paramount. And I I thought both Quentin and AT, which I think his real name is Atarian, by the way. A-T-O-R-I-A-N. How is it how is it pronounced? You said it? Atarian. I was just guessing. Oh, you were guessing. Okay, got okay. it. Got it. I didn't I didn't know if you were correct, no. correcting my pronunciation, but both these guys are large humans, long frames. I mean, massive wingspans. Both of them, I thought they both had really incredibly long arms. And they can both win above the rim. I didn't see any problems with hands at all. And there's going to be a deep conversation thing, I think, here about how guys win 
um, as far as, you know, if there are natural downfield separators, if they're guys that win in the air, if they can run routes. Like, that's the stuff that you really need to diagnose with longer receivers because there's some long receivers where, I mean, they're not going to be great route runners. But that doesn't necessarily deter them. But that's why the catch points thing can make people some, somewhat nervous because those guys don't always translate. So these guys, you you can't really just be a catch point wide receiver anymore, even if you're tall. You need to be a guy that can win in some other way. And I think both these guys have another way they could win, and I'm looking forward to talking about a couple of that that layers of their of their evaluation. Right, and the one thing I feel like it's easy to get caught up on when you're talking about these these bigger receivers or the 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 stereotype that these guys fall into is always oh they're they're not going to be able to move as well, they're not going to be able to cut as well because it's you know longer limbs, bigger body, it's it's harder to redirect. But I, I was pleasantly surprised watching both of them. I thought that they both had suddenness in their cuts when they were, you know, coming back to the football or when they were cutting, uh, you know, across the field, they moved pretty well. And I also like both their releases, like for, mm-hmm. again, for bigger guys, it takes longer to get going, but not only do they have that play strength to get off of press or just get off of a close interaction with a corner, they have pretty quick feet for, for guys, their size. Who do you think's the most, who do you think's the quick twitch one? Out of the two, who would you say is quicker and more uh, loose? I think it's clear, in my opinion. But um, I'm all right. Let me rephrase. Who do you yeah. think? Is, uh, who do you think is higher upside as a route runner? I think Johnson is higher higher upside as a route runner. Yeah, Agreed. I just don't think it's as, the, the reason why I was tripped up on the question is because Perry's further along now. It feels like not by much, but I think yeah. Johnson, if if he cleans up some of that route running there were times where it it looked a little bit aimless but when he was open man he was freaking open well one thing i really liked about johnston a bunch compared one the one thing is johnston's a really young guy right like he's going into his true junior year at perry is 99 kids so he's going to be 24 years old as a rookie which is like the only thing even though he was a i mean he just had a breakout last year like he had barely done anything a week for us before this past year they went to the year Jaqu- uh, Roberson, who I think it went into the NFL draft last year, was kind of the guy going into the year, and then Perry kind of you know took that mantle from him. But when I looked at them, I thought I thought that Johnston was pretty comfortably well, not pretty comfortably. He was the more flexible athlete in my opinion. I thought he got in and out of breaks a little better, just more natural short area quickness. And I thought that actually translated to after catch a little bit for Quentin Johnston. I thought actually I saw I saw some good stuff in the open field as far as post catch stuff. So I think he moves really well in short spaces for as big as he is. So I give him the slight edge over Perry in terms of, I I think that he has a higher upside as a route runner down the line. It's also a super, it's very overused when you're talking about bigger receivers and saying, oh, he's a, he's like a basketball player. He's like a power forward. But I have to say, I think AT Perry really, really fits that description of this is a guy who's a power forward because he's got that build. He's built like a basketball player. He's very well put together. He's got a much thicker, lower half than Quinton Johnson has. But, you know, I see there were some of the plays where he kind of did post up. I think it was the Florida State game, his Mm -hmm. first catch that he had in that game. He quite literally posted up and kind of boxed the guy out and dove to make a catch, uh, which was not an easy play to make because it was a bad throw by Hartman. But, like, I I saw those vibes of power forward, which is such an easy thing to throw out there. It was something that was thrown out there so much with Drake London. But I I really got that vibe from from A.T. Perry. Yeah, I got that too a little bit. You know what it is though, Joe, honestly, I I, I want to see if you agree with this. I actually thought that AT Perry had pretty good speed, to be honest. Like yes. I wouldn't be shocked if this kid's a four four eight, four four seven type of dude at six five, two hundred and five plus pounds. The issue that he has is that and I'm gonna say this as nice as I can, okay, because I know Sam Hartman's a really good college quarterback. Doesn't have a very strong arm, though, man. He leaves mm. a lot of stuff out there where he, I, I feel like A.T. has to slow down and come back to the football. And I think he creates some contested catches for A.T. Perry. I think that there's a lot of plays where I'm like, oh, he's got a couple steps. Like, he's created separation, and then Hartman underthrows him a little bit. So, I like I like um, A.T.'s long speed, man. I, here's a question. Here's another one. Yep. Ready? Because it sounds like you agree that you thought A.T. could run a little bit. Yeah. Better speed, A.T. or Quinton? Oh, it was A.T. I, I think Quinton, good. I, good job. I think if Quinton, good job. You're acting like I'm. <laughs> although I still am learning, so you know I don't. No. I don't hate. To I'm, I'm just. I'm just glad we saw the same thing. That's all. 
I don't think there's much much of a difference though. I mean, like Quinton's probably four five, which is which is pretty good for a, a player yeah. that size to you know to stride that much. I'd say yeah, I'd say Quinton's like four five two, four five three type of dude, and that like six four. Mm. I think he's listed at two twelve, so like he's a big cat. So it's it's not a deterrence from a long speed because um, he's not going to. I mean. These guys are not going to run away from NFL defenders a ton, but like the fact of the matter is, is if can you get on top of guys? Because that's how you create that separation and that's how you stack. Like that's what they need to do. So I thought Johnson's speed was fine. I thought AT Perry's for his size was a little plus, but I will say this. You know who I thought of when I watched AT Perry? Because I'm going to be honest here, everybody out there, I really like AT Perry. I like him a lot. I'm going to be high I, on AT Perry. Too. I'm going to be high actually- on AT Perry. Wait, actually, I'll I'll say no. I'll say this part. I'll save it for the end because I want to talk about the draft stock stuff. But who who do, who gave you the what vibes did you get from Perry? This is scary to me, man, because I was a huge fan of this player, and he did not turn out. And I oh, love no. I love Hakeem Butler coming out of Iowa State. And oh, he did not no. develop. Oh, you're man. gonna. Well, I, hey, man, go look oh. at Hakeem Butler's stats at Iowa State. His last year, he had 60 catches for over 1,300 yards, averaged 22 yards a catch. And my dude ran 4-4 something at the combine at like 6'5", 220. Hakeem was such a good athlete. And I think that Perry's hands are better than Hakeem. Mm. But, like, I was way too high on Hakeem Butler because I was like height, weight, speed type of dude. And I feel like I might be too high on A.T. Perry than I should be. But, but the traits but so that's are the there, thing, man. That's the thing with A.T. Perry, though, is like I, I was watching both of these guys and – especially Perry more than Johnson. Like I started with Johnson and I was, I was excited watching him. And, and that's what I was talking about earlier is that I was having more fun watching these guys because they're big, they're fast, they're strong. It's the height, weight, speed com- uh, conversation. And the thing with, with Perry too, is that he's a little bit faster than Johnston. I, you saw more from his cuts. He's got some explosiveness coming in and out of those cuts, the flexibility that you talked about, but like, what is, I, I can't. I couldn't really pinpoint like what was wrong about his game. Like I couldn't really, to me, what what was a detractor for why this kid can't be a late first round pick, early second round pick. I, I mean, I, I think it's. I, I think that you think he. I think that you like his flexibility a little more than I do. I think he's kind of a linear player, so I think he's more of yeah. a vertical route tree type of guy. So I don't know if he's like a full route stem type of player. The thing with Hakeem Butler was hands, like his hands were very inconsistent. I didn't get inconsistent hands with A.T. Perry, so it's different. Right, that's my point. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. There's just something about it where it just feels a little reminiscent. I don't know why. It's not the same exact It's kind of like negatives. a little too, too good to be true, which is which right. sucks. It sucks to do that. He, he has been – A.T. Perry has been one of my more impressive watches I've had so far from guys that I don't feel like are rated that high right now. But, I mean, I agree with you. I think he has day two talents like this kid could go in the second round and be like, yup, I get that. But I just want to see how this one develops a little bit, especially because Roberson's gone now. He has Hartman back, but he's going to be the guy. Like there's no question on who's the guy in Wake Forest this year. And then the only other negative is the fact that, again, he's going to be 24 as a rookie. So this guy, what's the upside left there, right? Like how much better is he going to be? Because if he's as good as he was last year, next year, and then into the NFL, I think he's still going to be a good player to a role. But is there even more upside? Can this kid be a early second round type of prospect? That's what I kind of want to see is just the evolve. Like if there's any evolution of his game that's left, because I really like the baseline. I really, really enjoyed A.T. Perry's film. I thought he was surprisingly good, to be honest with you. The thing that, does get tricky specifically with with Johnston and it was something that I mentioned last episode is that with a receiver if there's not that level of of consistent dominance it's hard to sell a guy to be late first round somewhere early day two type of a pick and the thing with Johnston like if you look at his stat line he has those games those spurts where he has his over 100 yards. Like the Baylor game, that was one of the games that I watched. Yeah. And I was juiced up watching him in that game, especially that catch that he made over two defenders with one hand, like he was going up to grab a lob. Like that was really fun. I, I completely forgot that that play even happened. And I was watching the play and I was like, there's no way he caught that. And I kept rewinding and rewinding. I'm like, there is absolutely no way that he caught that ball. But the thing with him though, is there's other games where he has like, 
two receptions for 19 yards. And I don't know if I should chalk that up to horrible quarterback play because that was TCU's one of their biggest problems and coaching issues and, and all the things that were going wrong with that program. Mm-hmm. Like he's a kid where I almost wonder why didn't he enter the transfer portal? And if he did enter the transfer portal and go somewhere better, he probably would have he probably could increase his draft stock going to a situation where he's going to be used better. Yeah. I mean, if anybody's watched TCU football, Max Duggan and um, they had a quarterback that transferred from Oklahoma. I think it was Chandler Morris, if I remember correctly, like they have just been very inconsistent at quarterback, especially Duggan. So, I mean, like you said, Joe, I'm, I'm looking at the stat line now. I mean, that Oklahoma game was silly. I remember I watched that one on TV and seven for 185 and three touchdowns. You mentioned the Baylor game over 140 yards, but then he's got the two catches for five against Kansas State, two catches for 19 against Oklahoma State. And those if you okay watch the teams, games, those aren't yeah, really special. Exactly. And, and I think that you see quarterback plays definitely a problem. You know, one thing that I noticed, and this is kind of off topic a little bit that was interesting, is that he on the roster this year is listed at 212 pounds, and last year he was listed at 193, which is kind of bizarre. Like, that's true. A, I mean, that's a massive weight gain for one offseason yeah. for a receiver, man. Like, that's a, almost 20 pounds. That's nuts, but I don't know what to say. You. <laughs> yeah, it must be. This is what I'll say about Quentin Johnson. He worries me a lot, to be honest with you. He does. And it's not even the consistency thing because I think that the quarterback play was not great. I think the offensive system was not great. Like there's hangups to him because he's a naturally talented dude. Like I said, four, I think he's four five low at six four, two hundred and ten plus pounds. He's got great hands. He has catch point prowess. I think he has a basketball background in high school, which I'm not surprised watching his game. I worry a little bit about him because he's very raw, like yeah. incredibly raw, and it seems like everything's a jump ball. And I don't think everything needs to be a jump ball. I think that there is upside as a route runner. I think that he can create more separation. I think he can do things after the after the catch. But those guys that rely heavily on contested catches, that worries me. It does because there's just got to be other ways that you can win other than in the air. And I think he can, but right now that's like the majority of his production is the ability to win at the catch point. And it's funny that you talk about the jump ball stuff because there was one play – in that Baylor game that I thought of, he, he had a really good release and there was blown coverage and he was wide open in the end zone and he caught a, and scored a touchdown on this particular play, but he jumped to catch this, this ball. Like he kind of hopped a little bit to catch this ball. And I was like, what the hell is, he's a, he's a basketball he player, man. He's a basketball <laughs> player. It's what he is. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm literally looking up as we talk. I guarantee he has, I think someone told me before that he has like a deep, basketball background i'm pretty sure he was like a fantastic basketball player so it shows up in the game i mean that's just how he wins he wins with the football in the air everything's a rebound everything's a slam dunk like and there's nothing wrong with having that into in your arsenal but the fact of the matter is is that those guys worry me though i need to see a couple different ways to create separation creating separation in the air is one way but you need to be able to win as an athlete or as a route runner and i think he has the route running upside but I just don't think it's there right now. So that's the only reason that he worries me a little bit. Right. And I I would, I would argue a lot of that lack of development was mismanagement by Gary Patterson and the previous coaching staff. Like they, they were really, really declining in those final couple of years at TCU. So I'm hoping with the new coaching staff that they brought in from SMU, I want to say it was, um, you know, that Probably. new staff, I'm, I'm hoping that that can lead to and unlock some of his potential. I mean, like, like the 212 pound, that bump in weight, I didn't even acknowledge that until you said something like mm-hmm. that's already a positive side sign to me because like I was watching him. The first thing I wrote down really thin lower half. It looked like he wasn't very completely filled out. Yeah. Is it Sonny Dykes is their new coach now? Yes, I'm not, that's I didn't even look it, it up. Is that who it is? It's okay, Sonny Dykes. I'm like 99% sure. And, and I just funny, and I back. just looked at, I just looked it up. Quentin Johnston at Temple High School was a basketball player. Senior year averaged over thirteen points a game, seven rebounds, two blocks a game. So yep, he was a basketball player. Just so we have confirms. Okay. It is it is Sunny Dyke. So just to wrap up the show though, Ryan, mm-hmm. who are we taking here? I think we're both in agreement that it's AT Perry over Quentin Johnson Johnston. But where would we slot both of these guys? 
right now if we're trying to project come come draft time? They're both day two players for me, second, third round type of guys. Yeah. I, I I think right now I think I like AT Perry more than Quentin Johnston, but I think the upside for Johnston's higher because I think there's a couple different ways that he can create separation. I think the tools are just a little better, but right now I would take AT Perry. I would say AT somewhere early second and then Quentin Johnston early to mid second. Like I think I don't think there's much separation. I think the conversation is going to be do you value the upside or the floor right now? Because I think the floor is easier to see with a guy like a AT Perry because he's just been a little more consistent. But then I think Quentin Johnson just has a higher upside down the line. So I think that's the conversation for me. I agree with that sentiment, but the one thing I would like to add in, I would not be shocked if either of these guys go in the end of the first round because the one thing that we were reminded of this past draft class is that if you are a good, big-bodied receiver, teams will draft you really, really high. That was the case with Drake London and the Atlanta Falcons. And it's that old-fashioned school of, of thought with, with talent evaluators is they loved these massive receivers. And that the NFL's kind of moved away from that. But if you're good enough to be drafted highly, you might get overdrafted a little bit. And I, again, I wouldn't be shocked if a team plucks one of these guys at the end of the first round because maybe one or that Johnson's going to need to have a really good season and some progression and show more consistency. But I, I think that's certainly possible for for either of these guys. Yeah, I mean, Johnson's younger, right? So again, he's only going into his true junior season. So there's much more upside to go there. Like he's still a young dude. So he's still growing into his body, apparently, if he put on 20 pounds this offseason. So I think the upside is definitely there for Quentin Johnston. Again, I think A.T. Perry is a better football player right this second, but if we're going for the long term, I would probably take Johnston over Perry. Well, Ryan, I think that's going to wrap us up on. We are going to be doing a full evaluation show next, so stay tuned for that. Uh, In addition to that, uh, Alex will be on that one. I think then the last one that we're going to do is – Zay Flowers and Josh Downs for this receiver group. But folks, thanks for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button on the Hack City YouTube channel at Joe DeLeon at Ryan Roberts. We'll talk to you later.